just played one of arguably the greatest villains on the Vampire Diaries. So what are you going to do to set this role apart or kind of make it stand out from that? Um, I'm going to change my hair and grow a beard. <laughs> sort of go from there. Uh, no, I, I, this guy is so incredibly different from Kai. They're on, on the spectrum in terms of, I mean, good and evil, point blank. Like, that's the most obvious difference. Uh, and in terms of introvert versus extrovert, they're just polarizingly different, uh, which is kind of nice. And it was, it was fun because there was, when we shot the pilot, I was shooting that as we were shooting the last two episodes of Vampire that we saw, you know, showing up at weddings and stabbing siblings in the pregnant stomachs while I'm saving the world as a cop. And this other show is kind of this very sharp contrast, uh, which was fun. You know, it's, that's one of the best parts of the job is getting to uh, pretend to be people who are so unlike yourself and also unlike the other characters you play. So, um, yeah, I think, I think people will, will see, see the differences pretty quickly. They're sort of completely separate humans, <laughs> which is good. It's fun. Can you talk about how angry Jake seems to get in the pilot when yeah. he's put in this situation? Yeah, he, uh, you know, his first, when he gets trapped, his first impulse is, you know, I'm number one, I gotta protect me. And uh, that's sort of, we sort of see pieces of him in the first few episodes that the season starts off. We see that he's, he's got anger problems. Um, and we don't necessarily know where that comes from, but we know that his sort of means of dealing with things is sometimes aggressive. And we start to unravel that story a bit. And we don't ever go back and do a full backstory. Like we don't know, okay, this is the childhood trauma that caused this in his life. It's not like that. It's just we, we see the result of this guy's, you know, years on the planet. And, uh, yeah, he, that's sort of his obstacle. He gets in his own way. Um, and his story is one of uh, being an, uh, he doesn't He doesn't desire the sort of role that's handed to him. He doesn't want to be a hero. He doesn't want to step up and be the one in charge. Uh, but he's sort of one of the few law enforcement inside, and he doesn't have much of a choice with his buddy Lex on the other side, so they're running the show and saying, no, man, you gotta, you gotta step up and do this. It sort of puts him in a position where he's gotta fight those inner demons and work through his, his rage and uh, try to be the good guy. What do you think is most helpful to him in the process of trying to step into that role of the hero? Um, like what pushes him that direction? Yeah, no, but that's that's sort of is a best way to answer that question is sort of focus on what what the show really is about, and it's really about humans who are very uh, very ordinary having to deal with these extraordinary circumstances and become something different than what they were before. Um, it's a story of hope, and it's a story of people being put with their backs against the wall with really nowhere to go. And you either sink down and are defeated, or you push forward and you sort of rise above the challenge. And uh, you see these people that we watch, the, the, the main characters in the show, are all put in horribly uncomfortable positions. And you see them at war with themselves, and sometimes they lose, and sometimes they take a couple steps back. And sometimes they uh, they persevere and they sort of advance and come out of it changed. And that sort of theme of the show is that, which sort of matches the answer to that. <laughs> what kind of chances will he have being one of or the only kind of cop within the district that sports? What kind of challenges is he going to face? Yeah. Um, every challenge. I mean, he, he gets sort of every... In the first few episodes, you start to see he gets, really has gotten the, excuse my French, the shit end of the stick, and every job that you wouldn't want, he's given. Um, and he's sort of, he's angry about that at first, and he sort of uh, shirks the responsibility and doesn't want to do it, and he, this, his whole story is, is that of seeing if he's able to man up and come to the place where he's, he does the right thing instead of the selfish thing. Um, but yeah, he, he's sort of, you know, he's, he's the guy. He's trying to wrangle anybody and everybody who has the power inside to enforce any sort of control and keep it from becoming the other pandemonium that we see in the pilot and we know that it becomes. Uh, we just don't know that. Can you talk about the relationship with Jana and then also then 
how Lex kind of plays into that as well? Yeah, uh, Jake and so Jake and Jana um, were sort of a thing first, uh, and that sort of is how Lex met Jana was through Jake, and uh, they're all great now, and there's no sort of visible uh, animosity about the situation, but. You know, when friends date friends, there's sometimes there's something that you never address with it that sort of lives underneath it. Um, and even though everyone's totally cool with it, and Jana and Jake are really close, and obviously Lex and Jake are best friends, and you know they're in love, that whole thing. There's a there's there's an openness and understanding of that situation, but I think it's the kind of thing that that informs their friendships in a way, and sometimes maybe things that they didn't deal with when that happened, when Jake and Janet didn't work out, and Lex was like, hey, I'm going to date her, is that cool? You know, the things they didn't really talk about or settle might sort of <coughs> create some, some tension. Especially with the two of them in the Sure, yeah. Working. Yeah, they're, they're in, I mean, Jake and Janet are both inside, and Lex is outside. And, um, yeah, and that's a fun sort of story to see, watch evolve with those friendships, and how they're separated, and how Jake and Janet are the ones inside, and, they obviously have this past, but now they're just, they're totally his friends. And yeah, it doesn't form the relationships, but that's not like, you know, it's not a love triangle story. It's not the, it's not a Delena, Stelena situation. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <for everybody. laughs> Epidemic is kind of the monster of this series. Now, as Jake, as a representative, basically, of the government, a policeman who's stuck in Corridon in this chaotic environment, does he find himself coming up against a lot of people trying to, to get back that control within this environment? Mm. Yeah, it, I mean, the whole, the interesting thing that happens when the disease breaks out, we sort of see it in every, you know, whether it's World War Z or Walking Dead or any outbreak story, it's about zombies or about a virus. You see people sort of go into this high-octane, high sort of adrenaline-fueled, usually poor decision-making state of being that sort of revolves around survival. And it's their, their state of that survival is their, all the instincts are allowed to take control. So they're not really thinking as much as they are just acting on what feels like a proper choice in order to not die. Um, and inside the cordon, that is exactly what happens. Every single person... Uh, once they realize the seriousness of it, and once they realize, oh, I actually can't get out. We're not going to let anybody out. Um, uh, <laughs> once they realize they're not going to get out, some of the worst qualities come out of these people. And sort of everyone's moral code goes straight out the window. And it, wow, he's getting it. <laughs> uh, everyone's moral code goes straight out the window, and it becomes about how do I stay alive and how do I keep this thing away from me and my, my family? And sometimes that involves doing things that people wouldn't do. Sometimes it involves using force or, or threatening or, or even killing and violence. And um, that's a very unique beast to be happening inside of this very confined space filled with people who are ill. Uh, so Jake sort of is the one on the streets, the one behind the pavement, sort of facing it the worst possible way every single day. Um, so there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of confrontation moments that happen where um, that happen where he sort of encounters someone who's sick or someone who's at sort of embracing the worst qualities of themselves in a response to the situation. Um, but yeah, he, he sort of is the one character on the show who's thrown into it the worst. <laughs> In the pilot, there's the phrase four to six feet. Yeah. Is that something that kind of <laughs> continues? You will never space? hear it again. Yeah, it's in every episode, <laughs> the whole, it's going to be on shirts. Like, it's, yeah. it's everywhere. It's sort of, uh, I had a tattoo them. It's, um, <laughs> it's really like the, the rule is four to six feet, and they sort of just try to spread it around to keep people safe. Yeah, it's definitely like a mantra that runs throughout the whole, <laughs> the whole series. <laughs>